Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Black Performance Project. I'm Nicole Hodges Persley, and I'm here with my fellow hosts, Dr. Baron Kelly and Harvey Williams, who you know, if you're a Kansas City local, this show is coming to you out of Kansas City area. Um, Harvey Williams is the founder and executive director of Casey Melting Pot Theater, which is Kansas City's premier African American theater. And Dr. Baron Kelly is an esteemed actor, director, uh, as is Harvey Williams, and uh, is a professor at the University of Wisconsin Madison. And both Harvey and Baron have numerous credits. You can check them out on IMDb. That's what we do these days. And I am Nicole Hodges Persley, and I am a director. I am an actor in recovery. I've been an actor for many, many years, but uh, most of the time I spend directing now, and I'm the artistic director of KC Melting Pot Theater. So if this is your first time with the Black Performance Project, we're a brand new show. This is the, only the second episode. And our interest is to create a place where you can talk about Black performance. We have a real kind of easygoing way that we bring our insight as directors, as actors, as producers, not on the large scale as Hollywood or New York or Chicago, but working in the middle market, we thought that this would be a great space for us to talk real talk about Black performance by, about, for, and near Black artists and those who are allies to Black artists. So today we're going to be talking about a very special subject, uh, which is the legend, the recently departed uh, Queen Cicely Tyson. So we would like to kind of walk down a memory lane with you with her today and think about just the amazing pathway that she has left a legacy in American theater, film, and television. So to start us off, I thought I would play a clip from her amazing work that was recently shown on uh, a morning show that I thought was a really fantastic package that I will share with you. And uh, we will go from there and kind of familiarize you with some of her work and, uh, and then kind of get to talking. So here we go. Okay. So today we thought we would share with you a little bit about Cicely Tyson. For some of you, you've only known her through her recent work and the work of Tyler Perry or the work of Shonda Rhimes' How to Get Away with Murder, and you're not familiar with some of her early work. For others, you've been a lifelong fan. Maybe you've grown up watching her from earlier work, such as uh, the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. Uh, or maybe even further back to some of her theater work and seminal works like The Blacks by Jean Genet. So I'm going to share my screen because you know I'm on Zoom and we are going to look at this beautiful package of remembering Cicely Tyson. be my generous baby girl, whether you like it or not. You know, Miss Ruth was a lady, and a lady always knows when to leave. I gotta see you, Sheriff. You gotta see me. us women to survive. Adam, I don't want you to be any less than what you are. Sometimes life doesn't give us any choice. But it does. You always have a choice. The joy of books. 
is that you get to act it out for yourself. Things began to happen, and people began to talk about, you know, this new actress, Cicely Tyson, and next thing I knew, I was here in front of you. <laughs> African Americans hold Sicily in such high regard. She would only do roles that served us as African Americans. She kept her way, she kept her class, she kept representing us, and she remained Sicily Tyson. Just makes you want to have, you know, a moment of silence to just take in the sheer impact and audacity of the depth and breath that she sought out to kind of put forth in her life as a performer. So where, where do we begin um, how to really celebrate a life uh, and her recent homegoing, we saw lines wrapped around you know, outside of the funeral home and the church of people, even in the midst of COVID coming to pay homage to someone who was not only a groundbreaking actress, but also um, a beautiful representation of black beauty um, throughout her career in a time where women of richer and darker complexions in Hollywood and New York and theater uh, have not been revered and still we're, we're facing that type of colorism in the business today. Uh, she was a model, um, an activist and theater actor, film actor, TV also directed. So where should we begin? I thought maybe we would start with our favorite or how do you come to Cicely, Cicely Tyson? What is the first memory you have um, as an artist knowing about her work or becoming aware of her work as uh, someone who enjoys performance. Well, Anyone? Let, let me just say to the, you know, Tyler Perry, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with the Medea movies. I've seen them, but I haven't seen her in maybe one a number of years ago or so. But what I have always loved about her is that she always refused to project herself in projects that denigrated black people. Absolutely. And throughout her years, that was the epitome of her flag on top of the mountain that she wanted to make sure that she was known for. And um, because the, the time that she came up, I remember when my older brother showed me clips of, he had videotaped uh, Roots. And for me to really sit there and watch her, but also in a company of other actors and actresses that we don't see the likes of today. And that has always stayed with me. Uh, and there were some tremendous actors in that. And I, and I don't wanna run away with this, but she just, has always to me had this illuminating quality mm -hmm. that just touched me to the core with whatever she did. Um, so I'll just leave it there because I know we're gonna be talking about things, but that's, I've always respected her for that, of what she's, what her flag post on the top of that mountain has said for me. Yeah, you know, her, uh... To me, it was the, the authenticity. So bear with us, audience. We're One of my a... favorites all time, though, was. Uh... We lost you a little bit on delay. One, one of my favorites. So... Okay. One of my favorites was um, uh, Bustin' Loose. Mine too. With, with Richard Pryor. <laughs> And I, I just remember the, the character that she played, where she was the mother figure, and also the, the, the woman figure, as opposed to Richard Pryor. <laughs> and I just... Uh-oh. 
realistic that was, you know, her relationships with those and to help him to be a man and do the right thing. While all the time being the force behind, you know, the, the whole storyline. And then when I think back, I can't even remember the first movie I saw her in because it's like she had just always been there. Um, and, uh, you know, you when they say you don't know what you've lost until you've lost it, I, I kind of feel that way about her. Uh, I, I don't think there'll ever be another person aura that she had. Oh, that's a beautiful, both of you are talking about light, you know, and I think as entertainers, folks who are working, uh, we, we've all been, have been stage performers uh, for, a, you know, a long time. We've all worked in TV and film, but the light of an actor uh, is so important. And you can watch a performance and see that it might be technically sound, but there is no light coming out of the spirit of the artist. Um, and we see that on anything from singers to dancers. There's something very different than being technically um, proficient Correct. and being connected to your gift where your light and your technique come together. And it is just, you know, one of those chakra moments where you see the light just coming out of the chest. And she was one of those performers and she did it on her own terms. Yeah, I Busting Loose was it for me and also the um, Miss Jane Pittman. Um, just I was mesmerized as a kid of, of watching the makeup and then, you know, of, of thinking how did they transform her and, and then thinking about it, you know, with hindsight, you don't know the genius that you're watching, you know, as a child. You just take for granted so much of the performances and um, I think where I was really coming of age as a kid, watching her and Richard Pryor, Richard Pryor was one of my childhood heroes, and watching them together, it was just a beautiful chemistry. And it was two masters coming together, master craftsmen, uh, and coming together to bring drama and comedy and romance. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was something special for that time in American cinema to see them together like that. She, so, uh, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, but she, through her spirit, she had the, she was able to illuminate an experience with her craft and her gift. And you are spot on when you're talking. But see, most people don't understand civilians or lay people with what technical performances mean as opposed to someone that's able to, you know what I mean, when you really break it down, because, uh, and I, I, I always loved that uh, about her, but she was also able to play opposites. She could play fierce. Mm -hmm. And then the next moment she could play trembling. You understand what I yeah. mean? Oh, that's what I mean. She was able to show the entire experience. And today you don't see, <laughs> You don't see that that much. <laughs> so, but that's, that's just... That's well, Baron, you give us a good point to bring that to the audience though, because one thing we want on this show is to, you know, we've had a few shows that really kind of talk about actor's process or director's process. And so when we talk about technique, people take acting for granted. The idea that, you know, you hear all of the cliches of, you know, my voice is my instrument, my body is my instrument but they really don't understand what that means for or somebody who's a natural actor. Right. You know? And just because it's just like someone, you know, you have someone wonderful in your church or, you know, in a community center who is a fantastic singer. They've never taken a lesson in their life. It's just, uh, you know, in my case, a God-given gift and somebody else it might be, you know, whatever you worship or you don't worship. But for me, it's definitely... A spiritual gift to be able to have that and then it's the technique that can shape it and refine it and help you control it the same you know you can we understand that with the voice but i don't know if we understand that as much with performance so maybe you know you could talk a little bit about the range of a, an actress like cicely tyson harvey and and baron 
um, as folks who, you know, you both are directors, you both have spent a lifetime coaching actors. If there are any young folks watching or actors at various stages of their careers, what do you see in someone like Cicely Tyson that could, you know, that you could point out to folks to help them understand what it means to kind of be a, a, a master artist? Would Harvey like to? Okay, well. Getting his environment together. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, 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 part of what we're talking. I'm horrible today with the uh, connection. I don't know what's going on here. Everyone, our audience is going to love love this because this is our truth, right? I think in this this particular moment of entertainment, we have to be honest and truthful. So that's obviously something about the acting. Harvey, we were saying, uh, you know, as a someone who teaches acting talent, who directs, when you look at a career like Cicely Tyson, you know, what are the takeaways that we could give to actors who are constantly working on their craft or, you know, at various levels of career, what do we see when we look at her that is aspirational besides, you know, that she's acted for 40 years? Mm -hmm. I, I think, uh, I, I think it, it starts with what you talked about, I think Baron mentioned that uh, she was particular. I mean, not, not picky necessarily, but particular about, Kind of roles that she that she took on. Mm -hmm. um, she, um, I'm trying to think of a movie that she was in that I would call not so good. But I honestly cannot think of with her in it. I cannot think of one because no matter how uh, the subject matter went, it seems that she was so grounded into the character she was playing. Mm -hmm. That uh, again, I think it was just that authenticity. That that I, I don't think not everyone has that. At some point, you have to, you know, learn to do this or learn to do that. But it seemed like every role she played, she had already did whatever work was necessary. So I guess a lot of the preparation, and it amazed me when you said uh, that you don't believe she had any formal, you know, training because that makes it even more, you know, incredible, uh, you know, the, the insight that she had into the craft. And so some of that, I don't think you can teach. I think the best thing some actors could do would be just to experience her, mm -hmm. just to experience her and take what they can get from her and see what she put into, you know, whatever she did. Oh, absolutely. I don't know. I think a lot of acting teachers will, will be upset with us. Um, but the thing of it is this, certain things you cannot teach and I, certain things you cannot give. And I think when we're honest about that, I tell my students, look, you either have it or you don't, the it factor, but that doesn't mean you're not gonna work. Every actor that's working doesn't necessarily have this you know, glorious light effect. They are technically sound performers who know how to do their job. And it is a, a craft, a craft just like any other technical job. And I think people forget the history of acting. It wasn't this go to school, get a fine arts degree. It was go find a theater company, a get friend. involved, learn how to do it, find a traveling show. I mean, the history of acting is doing, you know, um, of getting out there and doing it. And so whenever I meet a talented artist, I say, go watch master artists. That's where you learn, you know? I, I think you will find that you have to find the technique in your body anyway. Somebody has to find it and help you find it in your voice, in your body. But I think we deny some of our natural instincts. And I think when we look at Tyson, some of it's just, it's just natural. It, um, it is, there's a classic scene in Sounder when she's running to see Paul Winfield after he has been released. Mm. And she's running, and you see, <laughs> you see the arms flailing, and she's just, I can tell you that she probably was feeling that ground under her feet. She was feeling everything that those legs were going through to get to her man. And when she grabbed onto him, she was like being a part of him inside. 
you can see it you know so it's like she gave herself over to what she had to do uh in that moment and i'm sure just like in any of these other moments that she's been able to do but that that's a great moment that stands out for me when she sees him and she just ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have that clip. I'll bring it up in just a second for us uh, because it is pretty remarkable. And the, the fearlessness That's of uh, Cicely Tyson is something that was part of her entire career. Um, because when I look at, I said 40 years, this is a woman who I think at least 60, 60 years, right? uh -huh. 60, 60 65, years yeah. of, of acting. And when you think about where she, some of the early daring work she did, and I will take the theater people down a little bit of a rabbit hole where she, Maya Angelou, Helen Martin, James Earl Jones, uh, Roscoe Gloria Lee Brown. Foster. Gloria Foster. Gloria Foster, all together in Jean Genet's The Blacks. And I think that was St. Mark's, yes? It was, it was St. Mark's place, yeah. And so this is a landmark production at this moment of the Black avant-garde in the 1960s. And they're doing this avant-garde play by a white French writer who is aligned with, you know, underdogs around the world. Uh, Genet is a, a queer French playwright who is aligning himself with the Black Panthers, with the, you know, the, the fights in, uh, with Algeria and France, um, with the kind of the queer communities being ostracized in France and he's writing a play because because he sees kinship of what's happening and this play gets done at St. Mark's with all of these amazing young talent who is going to go on and change the whole industry as far as making space for black artists and um, I, I think did, did, does anyone know more about her theater career? Um, well uh, just in, in, you know, I was reading things in her book, certainly. It, I knew Vinette Carroll. She had worked with Vinette yes. Carroll in New York City. And, uh, you know, the other actors in um, in the, the Blacks, Moses Gunn, who mm -hmm. late, there's a picture of Moses Gunn downstairs in the theater department at the University of Kansas. That's from the wall. Um, yeah, absolutely. He um, has connections. And I think that it was left to the university, uh, his archives, they, they left. Oh yeah, he just yeah. these, and reading the book uh, of what she said about the production, that that people would rotate in and out of the show. So somebody would leave, go to, <laughs> come back. <laughs> so it was steady employment for a lot of people, you know, during that time period. And That's great, that, I love hearing, asking these questions because there's so many tips or uh, tidbits about American theater and performance and film history that come from being there and that does it, that don't make it into the history books. And so yeah. that's great. Harvey, do, do you know anything other about her um, theater background that you have connected to? Um, not really. I, I, I think I, I knew most of her work or was familiar with most of her work through Film. Yeah, through film and, and TV. Um, again, I she was just one of those icons that you just I took for granted. <laughs> I mean, I didn't feel like I, I wonder how she got to be who she was. I just took for granted that she was, you know, Cicely Tyson, and that uh, what she did was like I said, was impeccable. I, I forgot one of the little, almost like a cameo she did in, in her later years. Uh, I can't believe what TV show it was, uh, but it was just a, a, a scene. But she stole the whole show with just, you know, maybe a, a, a 15, 20 second, you know, cameo appearance. Uh, uh, not cameo, but- uh, uh, Yes, sir. Yeah, character. Uh, portrayal of, of, of an elderly Black woman. Yeah, um, if there's any scene she didn't fit still, yeah, you're absolutely right. Right. And Here's so, uh, story, well, yeah. sorry, and this is in her book, but I knew about the allegations because a very good friend of mine is like a, a, you know, 
a, a mother figure to me is she's 80 in her late 80s. She studied with this man uh, for a time, Paul Mann Actors Workshop in New York. And he was alleged to have sexually harassed quite a few uh, women. Uh, mm -hmm. Paul Mann is dead now, uh, but uh, Lloyd Richards uh, taught with him where they were partners. And Cicely Tyson was suggested to study with Lloyd Richards, but she had to interview with Paul Mann and Paul Mann sexually assaulted her in the office. Mm. He interviewed, I didn't know this. So this is pretty, you know, she's, she's just letting it all hang out. And she was able to get out of the office and she came back to mm. Paul Mann's class because she had to go through his class before she, you know, went up to Lloyd's class. And, um, and was she- this brought, Yale? Was this Yale? No, the Paul no. Mann Actors Workshop in New okay. York City. And um, she came back and Paul Mann didn't expect to see her again. Hmm. And, uh, and she came back because she was resolute in studying with Lloyd Richards. You know what I'm saying? So she went through all of that to um, just to make sure that she was going to study with Lloyd Richards. And she was a very spiritual woman, at least, you know, reading her book about how God has touched her shoulder and led her in different paths or, you know, that was meant for her. And it, you know, so yeah, I didn't know that. So certainly about her being well, sick. I think there's many stories. Um, I haven't read the book yet. And so I'm excited to, um, I enjoy reading actor biographies, but I think one of the painful things is the fact that we are, these silences, Audre Lorde said, your silences will not protect you. That's right. And when we think about how many women, how mm -hmm. many men, non-binary folk have been traumatized on sets, have been um, assaulted yes. and have not, for fear of ruining their careers, yes. have not said anything. And mm -hmm. I think that it's up to all of us on shows like this um, to talk openly oh, about yes. this and to give young, middle, older, the, <laughs> we have no excuse. We must speak up because someone could be hurting at any age, at any level. And I think we, we think these are dues. And I think that dues culture um, has poisoned and hurt so many folks. And oh, yeah. so I'm glad that in her last set of writing that she decides to kind yeah. of open it all up, yes. you know, for, yes. for folks. Um, I have a clip. I'm going to try to see if we can look at a little of, of it. Many people don't know that, um, you know, she was nominated for Academy Award. Paul Winfield was nominated for Academy Award for Sounder. And so I, I think that it was um, one of those landmark films that is making black actors visible in a time where we are just recently <laughs> out of the civil rights movement and we are making space and for black ourselves. Exploit black exploitation movies were really- right. mm. So to have this uh, film, I think it is important uh, as far as, again, to echo back what you were saying, Baron, to the, the representation. So I have a little clip here. So here we have Tyson, lead actress, Paul Winfield, lead actor, Lonnie Elder, screenplay, best picture nominee. So mm. I think these are important things to think that this is what she was a part of. During the Great Depression, a man is unjustly sent to prison. My deputy, I mean, we gotta take you down to County House. His family must struggle. Working in the sun, out here all week. Must back to get To overcome here. adversity. Charlie, just because a man and his family punch the I don't make the rules. In order to survive. The boy is hungry, Rebecca. Experience the groundbreaking movie. And what do we make it to, Rebecca? Another season of sharecropping for old man purpose. Working ourselves in desolate when cropping time is done. 
nominated for four Academy Awards, including Paul Winfield for Best Actor. I did what I had to do for that. Cicely Tyson for Best Actress. There's the scene that you wanted, Barry. And Best Picture. Sounder. I don't get too used to this place. They cut oh. it in that clip, but there's a longer, a little longer one when you see her running. Yeah, she's going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the impact, interestingly for me, when I watch that and I see it, it's, it's really emotional because here's this stellar black cast. And in 2021, we are still thirsting for those type of nominations. We are still hoping that our work will get the recognition that it deserves. And, um, you know, she had all of these accolades, but I think her greatest accolades were doing work in community. She worked on so many projects, as you said, Baron, that were so important to leaving uh, representation of African-American life as diverse, as complex, as, you know, mul multiplicity of identities. So um, I, I think there's not any two roles that she really had alike in, in her career. She was never really stereotyped. No, no, no. Yeah. So um, I thought uh, maybe we could look a little bit at some of the, the kind of connection to the legacy of Cicely Tyson. Most recently, you know, I give great credit to Tyler Perry for seeing the value of, uh, Cicely Tyson's craft and her work and enlivening and re reintroducing her to new American audiences in his, his film. Um, and I also say that, you know, Shonda Rhimes and Viola Davis uh, wanting to bring her into the How to Get Away with Murder franchise. She plays Viola Davis's mother and I'll play a clip from that in just a bit. Um, but what, what do you think about the legacy? Uh, what actors, you know, we see Viola Davis, she gives Tyson credit for making her feel that she could do this work because of the lack of representation of women. Um, or dark-skinned, dark-skinned African-American. Yes, absolutely. And this is still a problem in Hollywood. Um, yeah. And I say this as a light-skinned black woman with privilege uh, that I understand that there is a blatant colorism in Hollywood that really kind of represents darker skin and black women in ways that are highly problematic. And I think it's something, again, we should be talking about and we shouldn't just be calling it out. We should resist it and, and with the kind of products that we put out ourselves. Before, be, I know Harvey's got something mm -hmm. to say. I just wanted to, but I've always, you know, she got her due later in her career. Mm -hmm. in the Tony, end. later, everything, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Much later in her career, she had always been noted in the community amongst the folks that this is a sure. wonderful, but the wider, the wider acknowledgement of her craft was much later in her career. Yeah, and I, I think that that's telling of, of when we mentioned Viola Davis, she's already gotten not that she hadn't been around but she's already gotten a lot of the accolades which she deserves oh absolutely uh, and and you know that old saying standing on the shoulders and she stood on the shoulders of of, of Cecily and uh she also wore just like her I think she wore her blackness and her femininity meet wild uh, like a badge. She wore it with pride. Um, and then playing the different roles that they play, they never shy away from that. Even when, you know, whatever the situation, they're being attacked or put down or, you know, whatever the case is, they remain true to who they are and, and the force, kind of the force that they have to make change or to fight back even a, in a losing battle, to, to be a presence mm -hmm. because they are confident about who and what they are. When you, when you say that, Harvey, 
I have to think back to Hattie McDaniel and Gone mm. with the Wind. Now we, you know, that role, what she played with Mammy, but she turned that out. <laughs> she turned it out, man. You know, she turned it out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, Viola Davis has said time and time again that I have done all of the things. I have gone to the schools. I have done the work and my value. I had to, she says, I had to state my value, but she said that my career is still not comparable to the work of my peers of the same, same skill set. And she was referencing Meryl Streep and Julianne Moore. She said, I should have the careers of these women who are my peers, who they say, you know, I am a version of. And uh, I think Cicely Tyson, she was really a woman who made space so that there is, you know, a Viola Davis, but at the same time, that's still not enough uh, in, in Hollywood because you have someone like Viola Davis who is, you know, exceptional, exceptional. And one, we have to ask, what would her career look like if these boundaries were not in place? Mm -hmm. uh, because she is highly nominated and she, like you said, Harvey, deserves every award. But I think it's the institutional injustices that are there that make it so she has to continue to say that because she should be revered. And we, as you said, Baron, we revered Cicely, but it really took a buy-in from Broadway mm -hmm. and Hollywood to see her value when she started selling tickets. <laughs> That's correct. You know, when, when her shows started attracting people and, and getting nominated the way they did, you know, you would think that that would be a calling card. Um, I have a clip from How to Get Away with Murder. I, I don't know, I'm a big fan of Shonda Rhimes, um, another black creative who has had a tremendous impact on the industry and opened up so many doors for uh, not only black women, but actors of color across the spectrum and uh and also Bridgerton. isn't she behind, isn't she behind bridgerton yes she's yeah. a executive producer of bridgerton and i think there's another writing team on that she's not writing but she is the executive producer and she left her deal at abc uh because of the way that they treated her and she um basically is finished out the contract and has a whole nother deal at netflix and is, this is kind of the launch to the creative things that she's going to be bringing to Netflix. The, the, so, just, just out of curiosity, the Disneyland or Disney World controversy, that was really... I think it was a thing. I honestly, I don't know Shonda Rhimes, so I don't want to speak on the right. show as if I do know her. But in the things I read, is um, the research I did was that she was trying to take her family to a Disney property. Right. She asked for uh, some tickets so she could bring a group of people. And they kind of dismissed her and told her that they had given her enough tickets. And, you know, and <laughs> she I, I rightfully was incensed. I mean, this yeah. is a woman who has the long, I think the longest running, you know, drama on in history of that channel. I think it's 16, 17 seasons now of Grey's Anatomy. So um, revolutionized the kind of situation, drama, um, multiracial cast, uh, kind of a representative of diversity and equity in front of the scenes, even behind the scenes. I understand that they had some work to do and they even changed that. So um, it's unfortunate, but now she's at a happier place at Netflix right. and you know, I hope that works out for her. Um, so I am going to bring up this clip and share it with you all, but you know, Baron, if you would like to segue us into the next moment is really thinking about- Well, let's let, me, let, me, let me just say, it's interesting to, to people that are watching and listening, there are a whole slew of actors that should not be forgotten. And I mean, mm -hmm. not only female, but I'm talking about female. Gloria Foster. Yes. Olivia Cole. Mary Alice. Mary Alice. Billy, wow. Billy Allen, and during the time of Sounder and all that, there was Denise Nicholas. Yes. Janet McLaughlin, Barbara Montgomery. These were, and still are, fierce, uh, fierce talents. Um, 
Absolutely. And, and the thing in uh, Cicely Tyson's book, which they were all a sisterhood. And I've heard Viola Davis talk about this, a sisterhood. You know what I mean? So Diana Sands and all these folks, you know, let me not leave off Diana Sands. No, I mean, she died so young. I mean, I, but uh, again, I think it was a different era. I mean, yes. I, I love the fact that they were a sisterhood. And I love that I'm seeing a shift in Hollywood over the past few years where the kind of competition culture yes. is shifting, where Black women within this industry are amplifying one another and making sure that they pass on information from right. one another. And I think we, uh, as black men, who I know support black women and black talent, I'm wondering if you can speak to some of that competition energy that is within the African-American, specifically African-American diaspora community, not because we understand that there's multiple black communities in the US, but we're talking about African-American community. You know, where, how do you think we can you know, talk about healing and moving out of these discussions of colorism, out of these discussions of competition, out of these discussions of, you know, you have this. Well, I, but, I let, have this. well but Harvey can speak to this more so as an actor and a producer and seeing all these actors. I can only, there's always competition when you're auditioning for something, but it's a difference between somebody that's saying, hey, you know, there's a part that you're right for. Uh, I, why don't you get in touch or have your agent get in touch with somebody as opposed to somebody that's a hater. You <laughs> understand? And <laughs> that is, you, <laughs> it is good. <laughs> as you, a, said, you right. said it was such a hard H. Yeah. Uh, uh, part of the beauty of it now is that you can, you can actually confront it now. Yes. I think it started back even even just in in, in the industry itself uh, when Spike Lee did you know back school days and things like that. Where okay, yeah, that is a problem. And mm -hmm. is it something where we don't really want to air the dirty laundry like that? But no, it it gets aired because it's real. But now there are so many different vehicles. Yeah, that I think I think black women appreciate competition. I think, and they don't do it in a vindictive way. Some of them, of course, you know, don't do it in a vindictive way. <laughs> but they appreciate the beauty of another black woman. Yes. Oh yeah, family. absolutely. And that's why I, they support each other. Yes. I, I, but I do think that Hollywood, generally, that it enjoys pitting black women black men against one another and this kind of crumbs mentality. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to lowball you for this amount. Right. And then if you don't do it, I'm gonna to go to this actress exactly. over here and she'll do it. And now there are actors who are at that A level, B level. And I say that, I wish there were not levels to actors, but we understand that it is monetized in ways that problematic, sure, but it's reality. But I think that no matter what your level, telling the truth about the story and not perpetuating fictions as if, well, you know, it's just hard work and that's how I got here. That's, that's not right. true. It's never been true. It's not that's true right. at the that's regional right. level or the national level or the international level. Right. And I think we can't keep lying about yeah. this kind of politics. Bravo. That, that's Bravo. why that speaking out and, and, and putting things out there that need to be put out there, the truth about how you're treated, that's all necessary. That's all very necessary. Well, I'm going to share a clip with, speaking of that, and I'm, it's my job as the wrangler to our audience members. You know, <laughs> last episode, if you tuned in, Harvey said that he needed a wrangler, yeah. and I have <laughs> accepted that job. But I also want to stitch things together for the audience. And, you know, because sometimes we could be talking about things that you're like, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know about theater. I don't know about this. And we want to make sure we have something for everyone um, yep, yep, because yep. we want to make sure that you understand uh, that Black performance has a long history in the U.S., a long, complicated history, but we have been here for a very long time. Before Raisin in the Sun, <laughs> you know, we were doing <laughs> stuff. So um, I'm going to share the clip of Cicely Tyson and... Uh, Viola Davis and How to Get Away with Murder. 
And um, it's a lovely scene between them. And I'll pull it back just a little bit. All right, here we go. I'm taking him back. Oh, I'm happy if you're happy. Anyway, I'm happy because I make myself happy, and I make myself happy by loving him. God knows I tried not to. Just worrying about myself and my children. I worry about more than just myself, Mama. I know that. And do you? Because it sounds like you want me to be that little girl who goes hungry so everyone else can eat. Somebody wants you to go hungry, anyway. You know that. I just want you to be happy. Sam had a son. With his first wife. His name is Gabriel. I didn't know until now. Sam lied all that time. Every man I ever loved has hurt me, Mom. And I'm not you. I can't forgive and forget. I tried, but... And I just want to be alone. I'll let you alone. Because you're packing up to go home, and I'm going to be left here to do what? Save everyone else, even if it kills me? What about me saving myself? Yeah, what a, it's just a beautiful, beautiful clip. Um, I, you see the intensity of this kind of generational torch pass. And uh, it just, I tuned in every single episode that they were there together. And um, it was a match made in heaven for me watching Viola Davis um, act with Beautiful. Cicely Tyson. And, and you have these two, that was the first time I saw that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm watching it and you're seeing these two uh, supreme artists who have rich interior lives that they've created, mm -hmm. but they also know how to play the space between the notes. Mm. And that's something that, <laughs> they know how to do that. <laughs> You know. So tell, tell people what that means, playing the space between the notes, because we, we can talk between ourselves, but I want to make sure people understand. We talked about instruments. We talked about the voice and the body as instruments. So what does it mean to play between the notes? Share so, that. You know, not necessarily just to have a pause, but, you know, emotion uh, is, uh, let's say the text, the script that they're working with is on the seat. The boat is on the sea. And depending on how that current moves, that's the way the text is going to move. So they're not, they're not pre-planning, okay, I'm going to look at her here. I'm gonna, they're going on a roller coaster ride with each other. And if there's a moment of space, they take the space, but they mm -hmm. don't drop out. Do you know what I mean? And right. then that informs their physicality and everything else in the scene, you know what I mean? So they're able to um, listen and respond in a different way right. because the richness of what they're doing. is different. Yeah, it was amazing in that scene, the, the eye contact, the avoidance mm -hmm. from- uh, Viola Davis? Viola, mm -hmm. because of the, what they've been ready to talk about. And Cicely, Finding her eyes. That's right. She, she won't finding let her, her look away. Right. Yeah. Being being mama for real. Okay. That's, that's and that that dynamic was just. I mean, you can't touch that. Yeah, I think this is. If we could say, you know, another thing, just to continue that about playing uh, in between the lines. For those of you who love acting, or either whether you're performers or you're just, you know, lovers of TV and film, is that. Everything that you see is the actor having to interpret that off the page. And so when you think it's just saying lines and tossing it back and forth, that's just part one. It's like, I always tell actors, it's like choreography. You learn the choreography, but that doesn't mean you've done the dance. That's <laughs> okay, so just because you know the moves, I have to be moved by you moving in them. And if I'm not, well, 
next, you right, know, right. and that's why we click through shows like this. That's why we decided to put our dollars at places over others. That's why we show up at certain theaters and we don't because when we start to consent to be moved by something that is not moving, we're, we're consenting to what, you know, what Brooks is, what to say, dead theater, right? Yeah. You know, the, we, we, we want to be alive. We want to be alive in, in the work. And uh, this is what Cicely Tyson was. She was right. alive, what Viola Davis is. Right. That's box office, too. Mm -hmm. You can say a person's name and that sells the tickets. Okay, that's it. You know, they got it. It's not yeah. like, well, maybe. You know, I saw that last one. It wasn't that good. You don't hear that with some names. No. Nope. There's not a lot of names like that. No, absolutely. Well, I, I wish that we could talk for another hour about Cicely Tyson. We covered some of the work that she did in theater, uh, groundbreaking work there, her film work, uh, Oscar nominated, Tony nominated uh, in theater, and then television uh, throughout her career, not just in the Shonda Rhimes empire, but she's had several television and made for television appearances over her career. I would be remiss to, to not mention she was also a director and had experience doing that, uh, was a model. And um, I like to talk about her on her own merit and not who she was in association with. And I encourage you to read her book to find out other alliances that Cicely Tyson had that I think are important to African-American history and music and particularly in jazz. Um, she had a, a strong presence. Obviously, we know she was connected to Miles Davis. But I wanted this show to be about her, her legacy, what she's left for us, big, big shoes mm -hmm. to, for us to follow. What, what, what is the name of her book? Do you I have a title? Just Cicely, isn't it? Cicely Tyson. Uh, I'll pull it up. I, I know I didn't buy it yet, so I, I don't know. But I, I think it might have something beyond the colon. Uh, Baron's going to go grab it. But yeah, we encourage folks to read her book. And we encourage you to go over her filmography. Go back, look at the stuff, Roots, Sounder, Bustin' Loose, mm. some of these films. If you haven't seen them or old shows, please go back and take a look because- Cicely um, Tyson, Just As I Am. Just, just as, as I, I Am. I knew there was something beyond the colon. Just Cicely as Tyson, am. Just As I Am. Please make it a New York Times bestseller, guys. I know that she, ha her estate probably has some plans mm. And uh, we want her legacy to live on. I hope that you will join us. Sold out. I What'd understand. I understand it's hard to get a copy now. I don't. Know. I bet it's probably already sold. That's why I said keep buying it, guys. I have. I bought it on Audible. Um, I think I'm either I'm in the queue for it or or something. Because you know, like I remember when I bought Obama's book, I had to be in the queue. But um, yeah, at this moment, I just wanted to go around before we close out for our viewers and last words on Cicely. And then we'll kind of set up what we're going to do next on the next episode. Much love. And wherever she is, <laughs> she's spreading that love, boy. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and she will continue to be uh, a teacher mm -hmm. because people will study her now more than ever. Unfortunately, like I said, when you lose something, it's when it becomes even more valuable to you. And losing her, it, it, it's just a good example of that. She's going to continue to be who she was. Absolutely. I would agree. Um, she's been an inspiration to me. Every award she gets, you know, over, over and over in her um, older age inspires me to keep on working and keep on believing and that there is no age, age limit to this career and uh we she defies all the ageism in hollywood and has had just just a landmark career uh on our next episode we are going to explore if we can get a little bit of tidbit of a copy we think we're going to be talking about united states versus on uh billy holiday featuring andre day it is a new lee daniels film and uh, we're hoping it drops on february 26th so we're hoping that we can get that work done and come back and talk to you about this and uh, a really important American story. Many people don't know about and Billy Holiday. And so we're excited to chat about that. So we thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you very soon.
Come on back to the Black Performance Project. Come Thank back. You so much. Come Bye. back.